Okay, fine. You're the real Rat King. Now put me down before I send the turtles after you. That's right, after months of waiting, we finally have the Rat King figure from NECA's TMNT Mirage Comics line. This figure, along with a whole slew of others, has been hitting target shelves recently as part of their Cowabunga Collection event. The artwork on the box is super nice and gritty, especially this side panel. The product photos on the back feature two very distinctly different styles that we can go with, and the art on the final side seems like it's a bit more inspired by the more clean-cut version. I've really been looking forward to this figure since they announced it at SDCC last year, so I am more than ready to break it open and check it out. I gotta say my first impression of this figure is that it's not quite as big as I expected it to be. It's definitely bigger than the turtles, but I don't know, I just expected it to be a lot more massive. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, we'll just have to see how it scales with the turtles. Style-wise, I'd say this figure is a pretty good mix of all the different art styles we saw in the Mirage comics. Sometimes Rat King is portrayed a little bit more goofy and wild, and there are other times where it's definitely more serious. I like how the color is toned down from that super bright green as well. Definitely gives it a little bit more of a gritty edge. For accessories, you know we were going to get some good rats in this package. We get three in total, and the detail on all of them is pretty impressive. They don't look ultra-realistic, they each have a little bit of a cartoony comic flair in the face especially, but the sculpting and paint is really well done. We had that standard rat, the running rat, and then this curled around the bat rat. I was kind of worried about the expression on this one, but his eyes are still open, so I think he's okay. His tongue is sticking out, so I'm not sure if he just got whacked by that stick or if he decided to just give it a big old hug. And speaking of sticks, every rat character has to have a good one. This one has some nice detail, but again, like all other sticks, it is just a stick. But the thing that sets it apart is the ability to wrap that rat right around it. I do feel sorry for the rat just a little bit, but it definitely looks cool. I can't see myself ever displaying this Rat King without this in his hand. The alternate head is a totally different style, and it definitely gives me Gambit from X-Men vibes. It's still gritty and gross in its own way, but definitely more sleek and superhero-y in the face. Comparing them side by side real quick, the one on the left that came standard on the figure is that more wild, untamed look, and at least in direct comparison, the one on the right is a lot more clean cut. I usually don't spend much time talking about the alternate hands, but this time we do have some interesting things to talk about. You get two different pair of wrapped gripping hands, this is just one of each, and then we get two different pair of closed fists that I thought were the same at first, maybe they had a different hinge, but no. The only difference I could find is on the underside. One pair has the thumb tucked in and the other has the thumb on the outside. Most of the hands have this yellow leathery wrap on the outside, it looks pretty good. It definitely adds some more detail to the hands so they're not just so plain. But then we also get this one pair of super wild rat hands. They aren't really capable of gripping anything except maybe like a turtle skull. But they are neat inclusion and they are definitely gruesome. And then the final part of the accessories list I guess would be easy to miss, but they're these kind of loose bandages that are on the figure itself. You could take them completely off or just move them up and down as you like. For articulation of the figure overall, I didn't notice anything too extreme. I thought maybe those big bulking arms would be hard to move, but I was able to easily move at the shoulder and the bicep. You get a pretty easy bend at the elbow. The bend at the wrist seemed a little bit sticky, so I didn't want to force it here, but I'm sure it'd be fine with a little bit of hot water or heat. I was able to get him in this weird pose that's kind of like those old puppet boxers from back in the day. Not sure if that's super usable, but that's where we ended up. We get a full twist at the waist as well, and even a little bit of an ab crunch. He can look down enough to intimidate some smaller characters, but the way back is actually even more impressive. Down at the hips, the legs moved out with ease without ever feeling loose, so that's really good. And it ended up a little bit blurry, but the bend at the knee was super easy as well. You'll just have to take my word for it. The hinge at the ankle seemed to work pretty well. It doesn't go down a ton, but it's definitely more than you would need. Feet are always a sticky subject on these figures, but I didn't feel like I was going to break this one. The rock side to side was minimal, but I guess it's functional. Not really anything I'm too worried about. Overall, articulation on the figure seems just fine. The thing I put a lot more weight in is the overall style and aesthetic, and I think this one definitely nailed that for sure. I really like the mix of greens that we get all across the body, and they definitely complement that gritty orangey-brown leather look. When swapping out the head, I did find one more hidden, movable bandage, so be careful if yours goes flying like mine did. It just kind of lays loose around the neck of the figure, so you can move it around like you want. Here's that sleeker look with the alternate head, and we gotta get those rat hands on there as well. To me, this set looks like it might just be a little bit too big, but I do like the style of them. Overall, I can appreciate this alternate version of the Rat King, but I don't know if I'll be using it all that much. Those giant mitts did prove to be perfect for holding those rat buddies, though. 
so I might end up changing my mind. The only gripping hands you get are those bandaged versions, so that's what you're going to have to go with if you want to use the stick, and those definitely complement the gritty wild head as well. I really wish we would have gotten a second set of this rat style hand maybe in a gripping pose, instead of the two different closed fists we got, but I guess you can't have everything. One thing I was really glad to see is that you can put the rats in those movable bandages. So I was able to get the running one down there on his leg, of course the curled one on the stick, and then with a little maneuvering of the tail I was able to get that sitting one right up there on his shoulder. Looking really good. For comparisons, we have to start with that original Playmates Rat King figure. Of course it had a lot more bright colors with that neon green crossbow and that bright orange roadkill belt. I don't think either of those things were ever seen in the comics, so I can see why they didn't include them on the new figure. There are honestly still a lot of similarities between this one and the new one, though. We have all sorts of bandanas and wraps all around the figure, that kind of makeshift leather patch outfit, the spots of missing hair, and I'm really glad we can have some rats crawling all over him, just like that original figure had. I do like their interpretation on this vintage figure. It definitely still screams Rat King. Next up is the other Rat King you can get from NECA. This is the Toon version. I always considered this to be a smaller figure, but when you stack it up against Rat King, it makes it seem a lot bigger. Height-wise, they are almost identical. The new one's a little bit taller, and the Mirage version definitely has broader shoulders and more muscle up top. But again, I was pretty shocked to see just how similar these two are. There are a couple other figures that I wish I had in my collection to compare to. The first is this yet-to-be-released Super 7 Ultimate version, inspired by the Vintage figure. And then this next one is already on the shelves, but it's Rat King inspired by the IDW run. Comparing him to a couple more figures from the Mirage series, here he is next to the Jim Loss and Leonardo figure. You can see that he easily stands a good head taller than the turtle, so that's pretty good. He's definitely bigger, but still seems just like an average human, so I guess that's what they were going for. I could stand to have him just a little bit bigger and bulkier, but I think this works okay. And then for this next one, I've definitely seen some comic cells where Splinter and Rat King were a lot more... Not equal size by any means, but more realistic that they could get into a fight. I love this little Splinter figure, but it does look just a little bit too small compared to Rat King. To me, it kind of looks like a fully grown high schooler picking on a little elementary kid to steal his lunch money. Which, don't get me wrong, could be used for a couple funny photos, but I don't know. I think Splinter could stand to be just a little bit taller, or Rat King, I don't know. I don't want him to be any smaller, so... I guess it is what it is. Bringing the Leonardo figure back in does help even it out just a little bit more, so in the end, I think it works. The Mad Hatter just released a video ranking his favorites from this Cowabunga collection wave, and he had Rat King up at the top of the list. While I think it's a super great figure, very versatile, some cool looks, I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite, but still really cool. There's definitely a lot of good stuff on the shelves right now with this, the Stump Wrestlers, Belly Bomb, which was a surprise favorite, and of course, Vacation, Bebop, and Rocksteady, so seems like there's something for everyone.